The Roosevelt Corollary had declared that the United States must assert an international police power in the Western Hemisphere. When Woodrow Wilson, who had little foreign policy experience, became president, he attempted to expand on this philosophy by applying a moral tone to U.S. relations with the Caribbean and Latin America. Wilson's approach would become known as missionary diplomacy. Wilson argued that the U.S. had a moral responsibility to avoid recognizing any Latin American government that was hostile to U.S. interest. In other words, if a foreign government was oppressive, undemocratic, or unfriendly towards American values, the U.S. government would not recognize it as a legitimate government. Wilson believed that such an approach would pressure America's neighbors to establish more democratic forms of government. The first test to Wilson's policy came in 1911 when a group of peasants under the leadership of Francisco Madero overthrew Porfirio Diaz's government in Mexico. Diaz, a military dictator, had been friendly with the United States, allowing Americans to own large shares in Mexico's railroads, mines, ranches, and oil wells. Madero's revolution thus posed a clear threat to U.S. interest in the region. Madero's new government promised democratic reforms, but he found it impossible to satisfy the demands of Mexico's poor, ranchers, and factory workers. After only two years, a general named Victoriano Huerta seized control of the government. Madero was murdered during the struggle for power and Wilson instituted missionary diplomacy. He refused to recognize Huerta's new government, which he referred to as a government of butchers. Wilson sat back, patiently waiting for an opportunity to undermine the new government in Mexico. When a group of American sailors was arrested by Huerta's officials in Tampico, Mexico, Wilson sent U.S. Marines to occupy Veracruz, a strategic Mexican port city on the East Coast. In the violence that ensued, 18 Americans and some 200 Mexicans lost their lives in the fighting. The incident brought the United States and Mexico to the brink of war. Several South American nations stepped forward in an attempt to bring the situation to a peaceful end. Brazil, Chile, and Argentina offered terms that Huerta refused to accept. In turn, Wilson continued to refuse to recognize the Huerta government in Mexico City. The standoff continued until Huerta's government collapsed. A nationalist leader, Venustiano Carranza, came to power in 1915, leading to the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Mexico and Wilson recognizing the Carranza government as the official rulers of Mexico.